now we're going to go ahead and wire this onto the breadboard. So let's pull the breadboard down here a little closer so we can see. So we can focus that a little better. There we go. Okay, so since um, we now know that this longest leg, um, that's the ground, that's the cathode um, leg of our LED, okay, that one has to be connected to ground. So I'm going to go ahead and fan out my LED legs here a little bit so I can get them into the breadboard. And I'm going to put, um, to, keep whoops, to keep track of which is which, I'm going to put my longest leg of my LED into row 30. Okay, and then the others, oh, oops, there we go. And then the others I can put into adjoining spots. Um, so let me turn that sideways so you can see what I did there. So this is my longest leg I put in row 30, so I can keep track of where it is. And then my others I just fanned out to go into rows that were not row 30. Okay. Now row 30 I chose because that's my cathode, that's my ground. So I'm going to take a black jumper lead and go from that row 30. And then I'm going to run that to a ground pin on my extension. Okay. Now um, the other legs are going to have power uh, being controlled by the GPIO pin, so I'm going to need a resistor to go um, between those other pins. So I'm going to take my, my outer leg here. Um, and put a resistor jumping across the middle of that row. Okay, so I'm going from the outer pin, which was my red LED leg, um, and I'm going to run that resistor from that row across the center here to the other side. And when we used the multimeter, we tested and found that that outside leg next to ground was the red LED. So I'm going to use a red male-to-male -male lead and go in that same row as my resistor. And then I'm going to run that to a GPIO pin. So I'll go ahead and do 21 since it's real close by. So now my red leg of my LED circuit is good to go. Okay, then the, the leg that was beside the ground, um, uh, but not the red on the outside. The next one, when we did the multimeter test, we found that that was green. So I'm going to run a resistor from that leg across the middle here of my breadboard into the same row. And I'm going to use a green male-to-male -male jumper lead to go from that same row on the other side, okay, and then I'm going to jump that to another GPIO pin, and I'll go ahead and use pin 20 to control the green LED. There we go. Okay, then the outside leg was blue, so I'm going to run a resistor between that outside leg of my LED and then jump that over to the same row okay, through the middle. There we go. And then I'm going to use a blue male-to-male -male jumper. I'm going to plug the lead in next to the resistor and then I'm going to jump that over to another GPIO pin, and I'll go ahead and use pin 16. And now my circuit is all complete and ready to code. Okay, so I opened up Thani and made a new file 
called RGB plus LED dot PY. And first thing I want to do is bring in my RGB LED functions from the GPIO zero library. So from GPIO zero, we're going to import RGB LED. And from time, let's import sleep so we can put some delays um, on our lights as we change colors. Okay, we're going to uh, tell the Pi where the GPIO pins are. So we'll call this LED and create a new object, RGB LED. And we used uh, pin 21 for the red. We used pin 20 for the green and pin 16 for the blue. Okay, now um, because each leg of the LED is a different color um, and they're each controlled by a different pin, I can call functions by color. So LED.red and then I set that equal to the intensity uh, I want for that color. So if I want it to be full red, um, then I would do a 1 and that's going to turn my LED on to full red. Okay, if I want to um, lower the intensity of that, so let's do sleep for one second, um, I can do LED red and then 0 0.5 would make it half the intensity. So that would be a dim red. And we'll let that sleep for one second. And then LED dot off will turn off um, the power to the LED. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera down here so we can see the LED. When we run this. So I'm going to hit run and there's my red and then it got dim and then it turned off. So next uh, thing that we'll go ahead and try is the other colors. So instead of making my red be dim, let's go ahead and change it to green. So LED green equals one. That's going to be a full green light. We'll keep that on for a second. LED dot blue is going to turn on the blue leg at full intensity. So that'll be full blue. We'll let that stay on for a second and then LED dot off and that will turn them all off. So let's turn this back down here again and see if we can look at all three colors in sequence. So we'll hit run. There's red, green, and blue. Okay. So that is how you can get your three solid colors on. Now we can also create a mixture of colors to get some new colors. So that would be the color function, LED.color. And then if I turn on red, turn off green, and turn on blue, right? Red and blue would be a full intensity purple. So sleep one second and then we'll turn them off. So let's go ahead and look at the LED here again. Okay, and we'll run that. And there's red, green, blue, purple. Okay, so now um, let's play with the intensity. Uh, so let's get rid of this and we'll start with our LED off. Okay, now let's um, make a loop here um, to slowly increase the intensity of our blue LED. So for n in range 0 to 100, Okay, we're going to take our blue LED and we'll set its intensity to n divided by 100. So when n is equal to 1, 1 divided by 100 is 
up 0 0.01, that's very, very dim, right? Then it's going to repeat and um, repeat and repeat until n gets to 100, and 100 divided by 100 is 1, that's full intensity. Okay, now this would it loop so fast we wouldn't be able to see anything. So let's put a sleep um, delay in here of a tenth of a second uh, so that we can see it get um, dimmer and, uh, and then go to brighter. So if we go ahead and look at our LED and then we're going to hit run. Right there, it's dim, gets brighter and brighter and brighter to full intensity.